So over the past few days, I was actually scrolling through my YouTube comment section and I stumbled across a comment that I realized I'd never responded to. And that was asking how I actually was structuring my investment trackers, how I keep my investments in hand and know exactly what's going on within all of my accounts. So what I wanted to do was actually Sorry, a little pet peeve of mine there. What I wanted to do was actually show you guys how to set up an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet from scratch to track all of your investments. It's going to have a lot of great features. It's gonna be pretty automated for the most part. There'll be a little bit of manual input that you need to do, but there are some great functionalities right within these programs that are automated that are going to allow you to keep track of all your investments to get full insight onto what's going on. And you can look at specific things that you tailor towards your investment style. So it's a really great idea to have a tracker in place, have a place that you can go to to see all of your investments. And uh, for me, what I do is a little bit old fashioned, some might say. There's probably some resources online that you can have it a little bit more automated, but I like to have that personal tracking. I know my information's right as I input it myself. So I'm gonna act like I'm starting from scratch here and build this spreadsheet out right in front of your very eyes so you can follow along. And if you wanna build a spreadsheet along with me as well, you can go ahead and do that. So first thing you're gonna need to do is jump into Google Sheets. All right, so now that you are within the Google Sheets application, there's a lot of great features that come along with this for tracking your investments, tracking your portfolios. I'm just gonna start off by renaming the spreadsheet here. So I'm gonna do investment tracker. I would recommend that you have open your portfolio or portfolios that you wanna track. Right now I'm doing uh, my Robinhood portfolio. I'll start off with the top three uh, names of the companies here for you guys, the top three holdings that I have, just to give you a breakdown. I'll skip ahead and fill in the rest off screen, and then I'll give you an entire breakdown after I fill them all in. So uh, let me start off with the ticker symbol. And this is going to be manual. There's a couple different manual things you'll need to enter, but for the most part, this will be pretty hands off. Uh, you just need to put in a few different things and it'll auto populate the rest that you need. So I'm going to do SPHD O and KO. So SPHD O KO. Uh, next little column here, I'm going to have uh, be the name of the company. So company name. And then this is where we start to see some of that automation. So if you do a formula, so if you do equals and then you start typing Google, uh, right there it auto populates Google Finance. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on Google Finance. You're gonna select the ticker symbol and then from there just hit comma and then in quotation marks you write name and then hit enter and you can see that pulled in the company name right there. So you can literally just drag this down and it will auto populate the rest of them for you right there because it's just bringing the formula down. And then what you're gonna wanna do, you probably have a couple of the companies that have long names like this, just so you can get the perfect size, you, you're gonna wanna go in between these two right here, double click and that'll automatically drag it out to be the proper length for you. So uh, that's just a neat little trick right there. The next thing that I'm going to be populating is the number of shares that I have and then on top of that I will be doing my average my average cost so let me jump back in here uh, 32 shares 9.548.2 so 32 9.54 so 9.54 and 8 Point two, just a little bit more of the manual stuff. And then unfortunately, I also have to get the average costs by going in here. And you can see my average cost is $37.71 for this one. 37.71, hopping back, we've got, let's see, for realty income, we're looking at $69.30, 69.30. And then we are looking right at, for Coca-Cola, our average is going to be 49.41. So 49.41, okay. And then from there, the next thing that I wanna cover is the actual share price that it is today. And that is pretty easy. That's where another one of those automations come in. So equals Google, and then click on the Google Finance. Again, you click on the ticker there, you do a comma, and then now you're typing in the word price, and price, and I didn't put the quotation marks, so you put the quotation marks, you do price, and you hit enter, 
and then it loads in the exact share price right now for you. So you just drag that on down too and all these are pretty accurate. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is these aren't the most updated. You can see it updates about every 20 minutes if you read this down here. So just keep that in mind. It's not something that you should necessarily be living off of, but pretty much after hours, it's a pretty solid way to be looking at your investments. So that's how you get the share price right there. The next thing that I wanna go over is total equity. And this is a pretty simple formula in itself. All you do is the shares that you have so equals the shares and then you multiply it by the share price and then you hit enter so there we go those are my total equities right there and if you guys want these to look a little bit better uh, in terms of formatting so first off obviously this is uh, monetary value so i'm gonna go ahead and select this we'll do monetary column and then you can obviously, if you want to do more decimals, you can. You can do less decimals by clicking this here. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to format a few of these real quick so, so they're the right order. And uh, after you do total equity, the next thing that I want to go into is total cost. So when looking at the total cost, you are going to be taking the average cost and then you're going to go ahead and multiply that by the number of shares you have. So you can see the total cost will populate right there. Next column I want to cover is going to be the total gain and loss that we have here. And this uh, isn't going to look as great as I would like it to look because of the market conditions right now. But nonetheless, this is just tracking a por portfolio. This is just teaching you how you can get some of that information in there. So don't get too caught up in these numbers. Uh, what we're going to be doing for the total gain slash loss is taking the total equity and then you're just going to be subtracting the total cost that you have. So pretty simple equation right there. Drag that on down and you can see that that's what it's looking like for my top three holdings in my portfolio in terms of equity. The, that's my total gain and loss on them. So from there, what I'm going to go into is the percent gain loss just to, so it's basically the same thing, but I want to see it in terms of a percentage uh, just to make it a little bit easier to read for myself. So equals the uh, share price, and then you're going to divide it by the average cost right there. And then after that, just subtract one to get it to be the correct decimal formula there. So that is that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a percent. So obviously some pretty big uh, percentages there, but like I said, not too worried right now. So after that, what I'm gonna to wanna to look at is my allocation for the portfolio to know how heavily weighted I am in each one of these. So if I were to do this right now, you're gonna to wanna to do, uh, first you're gonna to need to do some totaling of these. So let's just imagine right now that this row is going to be your totals. So uh, when I come down here, I'm gonna to wanna to do equals sum, and then I will drag this here, hit enter. Then for total cost, we're gonna do the same thing, equals sum, and then drag this down right here. And then we might as well go ahead and do it to uh, total equity. So equals sum, and it suggests what to do right there. So I'm just going to go ahead, hit enter. So those are some of the totals right there for that. So to get your portfolio allocation, what you're going to want to do is uh, click on equals, go over to your total equity, and you're going to divide that by the actual total column in that total equity. So that's how you get that. And you're going to first think that, hey, you're ready to go. You can just drag that down. But you can see that you're going to get an error from that. So what you actually need to do is when you do this equation, you're going to want to do an absolute reference. So to do that, just go ahead, uh, start the equation off. And then when you divide it to absolute reference this, meaning that all of the cells that are going to be you know, linking to it are going to strictly use this value, what you're going to want to do is click it. And you can either click on F4 on your keyboard you can see that put in some dollar values there or you can manually enter those dollar values and that's how you set up an absolute reference so when you hit enter and then you just redrag this on down you can see that the portfolio allocation is just going to appear for you there so as a dividend investor, what I'm going to be really focused on for some of these is the dividend aspect of it as well. So what you're going to want to do is make one of the uh, title rows here for uh, annual dividend. And then the next one that I'm going to do is the dividend yield. And then after that, I'm going to do the annual 
return for that. So this is the unfortunate part here as well. There's no real easy way to get some of these data values. So I'd recommend heading over to dividend.com. So the first one I'm obviously going to look up is SPHD just to figure out what their uh, their annual payout is. So if I go ahead and click on them, you can see the annualized payout is uh, $1.89. So through 1.89, I'm going to make this here dollars. So it's going to come out to, oh, we got to redo that, 1.89. And then we got realty income. So heading into that, it's looking like uh, $2.80. Eight. And then one more, we're going to do Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola is $1.64. So with that information, we can now get the dividend yield, which is another equation we'll do right within the spreadsheet. So you'll do equals the annual dividend, and then you can take that annual dividend and divide it by the share price. So that's pretty simple. Go ahead, drag that down, and then change this right over 2%. Pretty good percentage for some of those dividends. And then your annual uh, return here is gonna be another equation. So you're gonna go ahead and do your uh, dividend and then you will multiply that dividend by the share price that it's currently at. And when you do that, that is all you need to do for that information. So let me go ahead and drag that down. And that is some pretty great stuff right there. So that's kind of the basic setup of all of the different categories that I want to be doing for this particular spreadsheet. Let me go ahead and just do some maintenance. So what I want to do is make all of these bold. I'm going to go ahead and center these. Um, I'm going to make sure that they're the right, the right sizes here, just so everything looks nice and tidy. And from there, I'm also going to go ahead and you know what, I'll add some borders. Um, I'll do all borders around those, and then these ones I'll do go ahead and go with one of these so I have a nice clean total column here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna actually fill in the rest. If you guys were wondering how to add more onto this and you wanna keep these here, um, you go ahead, you can just right click over here, insert one above, and then you can start writing more of those ticker symbols and getting more and more into it. So what I'm gonna do is fill in the rest of mine and then I'll get back to you and I'll, there's a couple more things I wanna show you how to visualize some of this, how to get some nice charts and graphs in there. So let's just uh, speed ahead, go along and do something like that. All right, so now that everything's been updated, what I'm going to do now is show you guys some visualizations of the breakdown of my portfolio. And this is stuff that I really like to look at, stuff that I like sitting at the bottom so I can just scroll down at any point in time and realize exactly what's going on within my portfolio. So what I'm going to go ahead is highlight these right here, all the tickers, and then I like looking at the allocation for the breakdown. So go ahead and highlight those as well. You can do that by holding control and uh, dragging down every single one that you have in each of them. So next thing you want to do, go ahead, click on insert and go to chart. Um, the way that I like to look at this breakdown here is what I'm gonna do is a pie chart here, a 3D pie chart, and you can see this is just the visual representation of everything broken down, so it's pretty easy to create some of this stuff. There's a lot of different things that you can do. I'm just gonna drag it down here. Um, a lot of great things you can do there. And uh, yeah, I know my portfolio isn't doing the best right now, down around 600 bucks, but we're looking to bounce back from that relatively soon. So so yeah, there's really a lot of different things you can do for those visual representations. This is just one of them here, but uh, the one that I like to look at the most just to understand my diversification where I'm at. Other things you might wanna add to something like this is maybe adding another, uh, another section here for the industry. That would be another manual thing. So as you go down, um, you could just do, you know, 
food and beverage for Coca-Cola. And you can figure out all of these and then you can have a similar breakdown and create visual representations of that. Just helps you understand some of your diversification a little bit more. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about creating some of these trackers, but I think this is a really basic one that you can set up fairly easily just by following this tutorial. It's not too hard to do, so if you're looking to track any of your investments, all of your investments, this is a valuable option that pretty much anybody out there should be able to do with the tools. The reason why I went with Excel is because you can use it whether you're on a Mac or you're on a PC. It's very versatile, and where I think I'm going to be switching computers back and forth, I didn't necessarily want it to be locked up in Excel. You can do a lot of the same things in Excel, so don't let that hinder you if you don't want to be uh, stuck to Google Sheets. But there is a lot of great things out there. And then guys, keep your eye out for some other things that I'm going to be doing, building out a, a nicer spreadsheet that is going to be downloadable for you guys that you can just enter in some of your new positions and it's going to auto populate all of this stuff for you. There's a lot of uh, really, really great resources out there that you can do some of this stuff with. And it's just a little bit above my pay grade to be talking about in a video like this, where I'm just giving a pretty easy breakdown towards structuring this and building out, you know, how, however you want to show your portfolio. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for checking it out. I hope it did help. If you guys have any suggestions, things that you added to this or things that you want to see in the future, definitely let me know in the comments section down below. Other than that, thank you so much.